Hello, this is a, a podcast which is a trailer for the, the next series that will be occupying the attention of Communitas and the preaching team there. Mark, um, I hear that you're going to do the book of Revelation. Um, what on earth are you doing that for? Well, this is the first time ever. I have, you know, kind of intentionally resisted uh, a series through all of Revelation. I've often done little bits and pieces. But, um, I mean, it, it's come up uh, in my mind in the last year, especially because of reactions that I've seen from my Christian brothers and sisters to, for instance, the, the whole COVID thing and so forth, and, and how when things like this happen in the world, um, Revelation is one of those books that suddenly gets referenced and people wonder, is, is this it? Is this event in Revelation? Is COVID in Revelation? And so as I was listening to people um, using the book of Revelation, uh, I thought some of those ways are not necessarily healthy. And so I thought maybe it's time to, um, to kind of help people look at the book of Revelation. And, and so, yeah, what, I, what I've seen in, in my mind has been a kind of unhealthy interest in, in Revelation. And um, one of the ways I, I think I see that being played out is what some people call a kind of a kind of Gnosticism, not like first century Gnosticism, but there's this tendency to people liking to have some kind of secret knowledge to, to know something that somehow other people don't know. Hmm. And then, you know, one of the ways this plays out in the contemporary world is, at least for some people who tend toward conspiracy theories, there's a sense of, we know something, I know something and other people don't know, mm. and I know what's going on behind the scenes, and I've got this secret knowledge, and that kind of makes me special. And likewise, I found that, you know, all my life with the book of Revelation, you know, some people have an interest in it because they think it gives them a secret knowledge and they have the key. Mm. And so they know something that maybe their other Christian and brothers mm. don't know. Um, so that's one kind of healthy, um, uh, unhealthy interest, I think, in the book of Revelation. And then the other thing that I, I, I've seen recently is what people referencing Revelation. It, it's, I think it's creating a thought or an attitude that is different than the original writer had, and that is it, it's coming from a place of fear, mm -hmm. and it's leading to fear. You know, oh, we're now in the end times, and we're, we're in dangerous times. Uh, and so rather than giving Christians comfort and confidence, mm -hmm. it's actually shaking people's confidence mm -hmm. uh, in the world. And I, I think it's reading the book of Revelation not quite like it was intended. I mean, I, I just noticed today, here's this book on Revelation called Repent or Else. And it's especially on the, the letters to the seven churches. And in a sense, you know, that comes from the book of Revelation where the writer says, repent or. But that phrase, repent or else, it communicates a kind of attitude that I don't think was in, what was the point. It's kind of interesting, isn't it, that in the last of those letters to Laodicea, which mm -hmm. arguably is the toughest mm -hmm. letter, you get the tenderest invitation. Exactly. Here I stand at the door and knock. Um, anyone opens, I'll come in and eat with mm -hmm. you. Um, and, and that's a reminder that the intention of God is always to draw us into a relationship with him. It's never his intention to push us away. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think you know, what you're saying about the fear thing, um, one of those you know, uh, very commonly used statements in the Bible is do not be afraid. And in mm -hmm. chapter one, the message that comes to John as he receives the revelation is, don't be afraid. Yeah, so, so this, this is technically true, yes. but not really true to the intent of, sure. of revelation. Sure. So I, I, I just think it's maybe a good time for, to, to help people to think in a more healthy way mm. about that book. Yep. Well, what about yourself? In your many years of interacting with all sorts of different Christians, how have you seen the book of Revelation maybe used in not so healthy ways? Well, I think that when I was a teenager, I was just on, on the edge of, of the popularity of, of, of a lot of these um, books, um, Late Great Planet Earth and, and books like that, that um, scared people by the prospect of the end times. 
and sometimes would play upon people's fears that they might be left behind and, and so on. Um, and I was very aware that um, also at that time people were looking into the book of Revelation and trying to find in the names and, and images and numbers um, corresponding things in, in history. So I think that, for example, you know, the, um, the, the famous 666, um, which kind of people use as a kind of numerical value for a name, I think some of the candidates um, have included um, Adolf Hitler, um, Gorbachev, Margaret Thatcher, who was the British um, Prime that. Minister, <laughs> um, and I guess probably there might be more mm -hmm. contemporary politicians that, <laughs> that, that might be put into that character as well. And after a while, I kind of thought, this is biblical literature. What kind of biblical literature is it? Is this the way that this ought to be read as a book? And I think I began to then um, think and, and read things that, that began to, to help me to see what kind of book it was. And if you start at that point, and there are some strong clues in the first chapter of what kind of book it is, well then you have a much more reliable guide into the book for understanding its details. Understand what the whole thing's about, and then you'll have a better um, set of equipment for understanding the details. Then more positively, not just counteracting some unhealthy ways of reading it, what, what might people anticipate now as we launch into Revelation? What, what can we look forward to getting and holding on to as we think about this book? Well, I think I said, you know, that we need to think about what kind of book it is. And of course, um, John sets it up by describing it in three ways. There's a revelation of Jesus Christ. It's a prophecy and it's a letter to the seven churches. And we might come back to the symbolism of seven a bit later on. But in the first instance, it is a revelation or unveiling of Jesus Christ. And I think that what we're after in looking at the book of Revelation is seeing Jesus and seeing Jesus and how he communicates to us in our particular situation. And the book of Revelation has particular resonance for, for the church when it's facing struggle. Um, whether it be struggle through persecution or assimilation into culture. Looking at the seven churches, you kind of see a mixture of those kind of things, um, assimilation and persecution. And those are twin dangers, aren't they? I think probably um, in Latvia, people have been very aware that in the middle of the 20th century, the pressures of being a persecuted minority in a country is one set of pressures. And then post-independence, the pressures of being assimilated into um, a more secularized view of society. And the book of Revelation reveals Jesus to help us to navigate the pressures of, of both those scenarios. So I think it's invaluable. It reveals Jesus to us in our situation that we might be able to navigate life um, effectively and uh, joyfully. Yeah, so I hope that you'll be ready to tune in to, to this series. Um, I hope you won't be afraid that, oh, this is a mysterious book, hard to understand. I mean, I, you, you know, might be excited or disappointed, you know, that when I teach the Revelation, you're going to be thinking, oh, yeah, that's, Mark usually says that kind of thing. That really fits with, you know, with what Mark usually says, because I don't think it's that much of a mystery. The book of Revelation is proclaiming, and John already said, it's, it's about Jesus, it's a revelation of Jesus, uh, and that much we'll be able to hold on to, and I, I think will be an exciting journey for us. So I hope that you'll join us as we start this series of Revelation.